of course, I would like to thank everyone who got the time to be here and to know better about the, the Belga Lux and the Belgian Luxembourgish Chambers. This is the first event for uh, networking and knowing uh, Belgian and Luxembourgish Chambers in Latin America and with our network that we are proud to make part of. Um, today, we're going to have three chambers from South America. We're having the Argentina, the Brazilian, and the Chilean one. And of course, the BLCCA, which is the federation. Each one will have their own time to present themselves, so I'm not get, getting into their contents. But um, we are very happy to have you here. This meeting is in the format of a uh, meeting, so everyone will be able to open their cameras. Uh, we ask you to keep your mics on mute while everyone is talking. And in the end, we'll have a Q&A session so we can chat about the, the benefits of being part of each chamber and the Federation. Um, if you have any questions that you want to share beforehand, you can also write in the chat. I'll read or call you at the end. And um, I think we can already begin. Uh, we have 20 people in the room right now. So I would like to present to you Rita Herman, president of the Argentinian uh, ch chamber. Uh, Rita, please, the, the screen is yours. Well, no, thank you very much. Um, and uh, thank you for this invitation to participate in this meeting. Uh, as you can see, I'm wearing the Argentine colors today and unfortunately it didn't help with the football this morning, but uh, <laughs> a bit of a, a disaster for Argentina, but here we go. Uh, the, Argentine, the, Luxem the Belgian Luxembourg Chamber in Argentina has been active since it was, well, was constituted in 1917 and is one of the first um, commercial chambers of commerce in, in Argentina. Um, as you know, there was a lot of immigration end of the end of the end of the, the 1800s, beginning of the 1900s. And uh, so we've, uh, we've had an early start. Um, there was also a boom period and where, by which we had like about 300 um, um, companies that were members of the, of the chamber and uh, that slowly slowed down together with also the, the Argentine economy to about uh, 20 two years ago and now we are back to 50 members. We have Bigger companies, such as uh, the, the, the companies that are doing the dredging of the, the Rio Paraná, which is Jan de Nol, and uh, the Dame, and Demi International, and uh, we have Pura Autos, Isinder, so like bigger companies. And lately, what we see is that we have not so much the bigger companies that want to come and invest in Argentina, but rather smaller entrepreneurs with very good business ideas and that do very well setting up their business in Argentina because it is a a country that offers a lot of opportunities. The, the people are very educated. It's a very um, positive environment to develop businesses. And we see that many Belgian entrepreneurs set up their businesses from Argentina and then grow towards other Latin American countries and even to Europe. So that's a very positive, um, a very positive uh, development lately. Um, we have, so this is, we, we can go to the next page. Uh, this is like a sample of an, uh, some of our companies. Then, uh, as I said, we have a very small structure. The, the ambassador is the vice, is the honorary president of, of the chamber. And I'm the, the, the president, the working, the working president, let's say. Uh, we have taken over the Chamber of Commerce in 2000, end of 2019. We, when I say we, I mean Yves Mange, the Secretary of the, of the Chamber of Commerce, and myself. Um, and then we went straight into pandemia. Uh, luckily for us, because uh, the Chamber has, was uh, struggling with some administrative uh, uh, problems, we had these two years to really put everything up to, uh, in order. 
And uh, so now we are fully operational. And since then we, we increased or we doubled the amount of customers again, of customers of members rather. Um, so we are a very small structure. Everyone is really like uh, voluntary working for the chamber. And we have a lot of support of our uh, honorary president who is uh, the ambassador and also of the members of the representatives of the of the um, regions no, of AWEX and FITS who are present, who are working from, from, the, uh, from the embassy offices, but they are really um, helping us as, as Chamber of Commerce. So what are our objectives? Uh, the objectives are to connect the Belgian and Luxembourg entrepreneurs with activities in Argentina with the aim of facilitating their business relations and defending their collective interests. Then to promote and develop economic relations between Belgium and Luxembourg and Argentina as a whole. And uh, also to enhance cultural and educational bonds between the countries. And obviously, as I already said, the collaboration with the embassy, AWIX and FIT. More concretely, what is it that we do? Uh, we really focus on the on the needs of our customers. So we see we have regular meetings with our with our members, not customers, with our members. So that's why we divided in the table. We have two working groups. Um, one group that works on the economical and legal issues that our members are are confronted with. And uh, the other is more on the social and the events and the cultural part of, of um, the activities that we develop. So we have like uh, two monthly uh, meetings with the ambassador at residence, whereby the ambassador and ourselves, we invite several of our members and we go alternating the, the members to touch the pulse of what is happening uh, with the members in view of all the economic changes that are continuously happening in Argentina and not for the time being, not for the better. So it's a very complex situation. So we try to play closer on the ball by having these meetings and by trying to intervene. How do we intervene? We try via the, the embassy. That's one, one way that we try to intervene and to, uh, try and do problem solving for our members. And the other way is being part as the Chamber of Commerce in, in Argentina, being member, being part of the USEP and the Euro Chamber. USEP is like the, the overall um, chamber, union of bilateral chambers. And uh, of course, the Euro Chamber is, um, the, is the representation of all the European chambers in Argentina. So we go, we, we are part, active part of these two uh, bigger groups that we try to use as lobby groups. Like for instance, now we have like enormous uh, import restrictions. So we are pushing from these two uh, lobby groups um, to see whether we can change something and make a difference for our companies that all have their imports stuck. Um, so that's one thing we do. So lobby and really focusing on helping our members with their economical problems and legal problems. And then uh, obviously we also try to, well, we keep our members updated through website and newsletter events. And um, and then the other big part of the, of the activities are the more social activities, because I think that uh, we think that members can learn from each other a lot. So what we do is we organize meetings in uh, each other's facilities. So for instance, we have like a company of a member the, like Puratos and they, they invite all the members and then they give a presentation of, of, their, um, of their facilities. And also uh, it's like a forum, like a forum in order to, to, to meet each other and to, to discuss um, eventual problems or positive or not, not only problems, but also positive positive developments. So that's another activity. And then uh, on the cultural part, we try to also enhance um, the cultural activities between countries. And um, as, a, as a curator, I also work on, on that side in promoting Belgian artists and contemporary artists or modern artists uh, that have their, uh, their uh, links between, um, between Argentina, Belgium and Luxembourg. 
Uh, for the next year, we're also focusing on something, uh, a different activity, which I think is very accurate at this time, especially now with uh, the, um, the talks last week in Egypt on COP27. Uh, so we are very involved with climate change, and that is something that we would like to further develop next year, and also uh, on the importance of managerial functions for women in our companies. And we are lucky as a Belgian, chamber, Belgian Luxembourg Chamber of Commerce in Argentina, but the representation of women is very, is very uh, important in not only between our members, but also when we invite speakers, we have like a uh, focus to, to, to prioritize or uh, having uh, women speakers. So we use women economists, for instance, and uh, but that's well, that's uh, a thing I think we share with another chamber of commerce here present. So this very briefly, uh, a presentation of our chamber, and obviously our willingness. I would like to stress our willingness of uh, myself and Eve, and uh, our collaborators uh, that you've seen on the list to be also open to questions that come from other countries like Chile, the members of the Chilean uh, Chambers of uh, Chilean Chamber of Commerce, enfin, the Belgian Luxembourg Chamber of Commerce in Chile and in Brazil. So you will find our contacts and uh, we are very willing to, to help you in any way we can or to give information any way you can. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Rita. And it was a very good overview of the Argentinian chamber. Uh, now, give the words to the Brazilian chamber, which I'm proud to be a member of the director of boards. Um, please, Damon Grimopetz, our uh, president of Belga Lux Brazil, um, the screen is yours. Okay. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, Rita, for these nice explanations. It's a pleasure for me as president of the Belgalux to have here the floor and to present you in some minutes a bit what the uh, Belgalux Chamber is doing. Um, Belgalux is a nonprofit organization which was founded in 1938. So we're almost 90 years uh, of existence. And we are consisting of a group of volunteers helping to put Belgium uh, more on the map. Our mission, what we want to do is really, we want to connect the Belgium, Luxembourg and Brazilian companies together and to leverage their businesses. This is what we want to do in order to create an environment for all of them to make a networking and to a matchmaking uh, atmosphere so that it enables all of these companies, which are our associates, that they can grow their business and that they can drive commercially the um, sectors in which they are. In the Belgalux, we do have four antennas uh, in Brazil. We have Rio de Janeiro, Goiânia, Fortaleza, and Natal. Main activity remains in Sao Paulo, but due to the size of the country, uh, we, we have set up these antennas, which we have also representatives in each uh, location. Today, we do have something like 45 members, and uh, this can be companies or this can be physical persons. Huh? We are striving a lot to have more companies in the chamber. The chamber has had its better days and, and uh, days where we had bigger companies. We lost some of those. And in fact, there's a big activity now going on, looking for more uh, members and more associates uh, to join the, the, the chamber. Uh, what is important to say for our associates is that we are very close to the embassy uh, with the uh, ambassador, who is a very supportive uh, element for our chamber. Also to the consulate, we have consulate general in uh, Sao Paulo and consulate general in uh, Rio de Janeiro, all very supportive to, to the chamber. And also we do have the uh, a very good working relationship together with the agencies, which is the FIT, uh, Flanders Investment and Trade, Hub Brussels and AWACS. It's nice to say that we can work very well together, even we don't do exactly the same activities. As Belgolux is more an organization which works with volunteers and we are more matchmakers, the real execution of the help and the work is then passed on more to the FIT and the hub 
uh, Brussels to execute uh, the work um, as they have more resources and more contacts. Also, it's nice to say for us that we have uh, very good partnerships also with uh, now what we do today exactly is uh, with the DLCCA. So we start to connect these chambers uh, across Latin America in connection with the Federation in order to help our associates also to have connections with Argentina, with Chile, with US, with Europe in an easy form so that we can bring more value to these uh, associates. Recently, we also made a um, working group together with the LCBA. LCBA stands for the Low Carbon Business Action. We have seen that most of our associates are very interested in sustainability and environmental issues. And this organization, which is based in Belgium, helps Brazilian companies to get more knowledge about sustainability, how to reduce their footprint, and uh, we can involve in that sustainability action. So it's a partnership between the chambers and the uh, LCBA to uh, offer to our members uh, a progress in their sustainability actions. I think we can go to the next slide. Here we see some of our member companies. We have bigger groups. We have the Katun Nazis, we have BNP, Impextraco, which uh, a good associate for many years, Fomico, Parafix. I will not name all of them, but um, our goal is really to go for the bigger companies. As you see in our list, we do have many uh, KMOs, uh, so middle and smaller companies, and we want to expand our range uh, with bigger companies. On the right side of the scene, on the screen, you see there's many opportunities that we have to uh, look for new associates. And with the new dynamic that we have in the chamber over the last months, we are very confident that uh, we can bring on these new associates. Here we see the board of directors. We have tried to bring a new board of directors with a bit uh, younger blood, if I can say so. So you see many young people. I think it's important for the chamber also to bring young, enthusiastic and motivated people to the chamber. Uh, as we know, we have different generations and different ideas. And I think it's good to, to see these young people coming in. We have all functions covered from president, vice president, uh, marketing, sustainability, sales. So all functions are covered. And in the bottom on the left side, you see our people who are responsible for the antennas in uh, Goyas, Rio de Janeiro, Fortaleza, and Natal. Okay. I need to say these antennas are only a uh, resort with one resource, so we cannot do wonders, but at least we have a point of contact who will then use his contacts and his network to help our associates further. On the right side, we have a picture here of the five councils that we have. These are people who are served, who have been serving in previous um, directorias of the chamber, so we have a well and good knowledge of the chamber and who guide our directoria on what to do and how to maintain the longevity of the, of the chamber. Now, if you talk a bit about the goals for 2023, we need to bring value to our associates. This is really the most important thing. We can only be of interest if we bring value to the associates. And the way we do that is that we have set up a calendar of events that we try to be interesting and bring value. And these events can be workshops, they can be CEO talks. For example, we take a CEO of an important company, could be a Brazilian company or could be a, a Belgian or a Luxembourg company. And we have a discussion on how people see the economic situation uh, in their business, in their sector. We do also, as uh, Rita explained in Argentina, we do company visits in the same format. We bring our associates, we show the plant, we show the business. Some people, we learn about the new sector. And then afterwards, we have like a interaction with all associates as we want to learn from each other. We do webinars. In fact, every month, we try to do two or three of these events. Huh? Webinars was something very frequent that we did in the uh, pandemic and uh, that we continue to, con to do. On a two monthly basis, we do a newsletter 
and our associates are allowed to bring articles of their company to bring, um, they can postulate for some, some jobs uh, as well. They can bring novelties of the company or important things that happen uh, in Belgium or in their sector. Huh? And also we do have some happy hours, some uh, dinners or uh, lunches to bring people together. So that is a part of the, this is the main, I would say the main uh, agenda of the, of the chamber to bring every month something new to the associates. Further, what we plan to do for 2023 is also to reinforce our cooperation with the Latin American chambers as we start to do that today. And it's very uh, positive to hear what our chambers are doing. And this is a good benchmark for all of us. We can learn from each other. And I hope that we can really build on that uh, experience that is around for so many years. Okay, and then also we will further look for uh, more contacts with the other European chambers in Sao Paulo. Uh, there's the Euro cameras, and we will try to uh, revitalize a bit our contacts with the Euro cameras. So we have the Dutch, the French, the Spanish, all these chambers who also work actively in our territory. Another point of our goals is also to strengthen the partnerships with the LLCA and with the LCDA, the low carbon, uh, this par uh, these partnerships have been started, but now we need to really make them work and bring value to the associates. Yeah. And last point, in fact, of the goal is for the uh, association is really bring our members together, try to help their business by making connections, uh, networking, and uh, matchmaking, we have learned that we can learn so much from each other. We're all companies from abroad that come in a different country and there's so much to learn, there's so much good context that we need to exchange. So this part of this networking is very important and we hope that we can continue to do that. And that is to my idea, one of the most valuable uh, assets that the chamber can bring to our associates. So I think this is a bit what I wanted to explain about the Belga Lux. You have some contacts over here. We're very happy to help you with your business. And we would like to see you joining the chamber and uh, joining the Belgian and Luxembourg community here in Brazil. Thank you. Thank you, Damien. Uh, I think we can begin to see some patterns here. So I'll give the words to our col colleagues in Chile. Please, Alan Kazarowski, the screen is yours. Thank you very much, Daniel. Well, it's a pleasure for me to, to attend this webinar uh, from, from Chile. I think it was a very good decision to join recently the BLCCA uh, in order to, to meet you and uh, to exchange some uh, ideas and uh, experiences about uh, what we do. Because I think that after the um, exposition of my colleagues, I think that uh, we basically do the same thing. So the um, Chilean Belgian Luxembourg Chamber of Commerce um, is about uh, 41 years old now. Um, so uh, much younger than the Brazilian and the, the Argentinian. Um, and uh, it's been started by, by uh, business, business men and women from um, uh, Chile, but with connection to, to Belgium. And uh, the idea was to increase, of course, uh, the relationship uh, between the two countries. And, um, and uh, we started as a Belgian, uh, Chilean-Belgian Chamber of Commerce, and uh, then we integrated also uh, the Luxembourgese Chamber of Commerce. Um, and uh, we started to do uh, what, what uh, we like to do. It's uh, basically networking. Uh, networking, but uh, I like to say it, it's uh, internal, internal networking and external networking, because I think internal networking, because the, the companies need to know each other, the Belgian companies or Luxembourgese companies need to know the experience of the other. And uh, so this is very important for us uh, to make this connection uh, inside the Chamber of Commerce. Um, on, the other hand, on the other hand, um, we, of course, are open to the, the Chilean community. Uh, so uh, we are basically making all kinds of events 
and um, in order to make us known and in order to integrate the uh, the Chilean uh, community to to our activities and make us known. I think uh, it's been very uh, challenging in the last year uh, to uh, to keep that presence uh, through webinars and, uh, and through events where we could not be presential. So we had to do many things, but this is this is basically what we do. So um, I think uh, we are present on um, social networks. Um, we are trying to um, to make some uh i won't say some noise but I, I i prefer to to but we have to be dynamic i think uh, we we have to uh compete in a way with other big belgian other big uh chambers of commerce from uh france germany uh united states etc so for a small uh chamber of commerce uh as ours as begolix um i think we we have to make uh some noise and and to bring also um the the belgian way of life or luxembourgish way of life uh in uh making very nice uh events uh where we can have uh, good food good beer etc this is part of us so we we also um have defined uh through the years uh with our members to focus on mainly three clusters uh the first cluster is uh energy uh, which includes energy efficiency, renewable energies. Uh, now it's also the green hydrogen uh, and things like that. So, um, so this is, uh, I think, one of the cluster that we are developing with companies like uh, NG, uh, Machiels, uh, AGC. So um, this is, uh, I think, a very fast-growing uh, sector in uh, in Chile and where Belgian companies can really uh, have a word uh, in, in this uh, sector. The other cluster is um, basically food and beverage. Um, I think uh, companies like Puratos or um, companies uh, like um, the, 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 the beer companies, etc. I won't say uh, many names, but um, are also uh, very present in the food and beverage um, in Chile. So this is another another very dynamic cluster. And, um, and then um, we have also uh, something that we started years ago, uh, which is the, lead the, the women leadership. Uh, so I think that uh, Belgium has also a word to say in, in that uh, sector. So um, this is very important for us to promote uh, activities uh, for for the leadership of, of women in in business and and to to show the way in a sense um, in uh, in Chile. So um, so this is very very interesting for us. This is uh, quite eclectic, um, but um, but very very interesting. As for the um, activities, uh, I would like to to give the floor to Anne because we work very. Uh, uh, closely together, um, she is our um, general manager, and um, very um, very effective. And uh, I also want to mention that we have our office in the in the very office offices of the Belgian um, embassy. So uh, this is also something very important for us to mention that uh, uh, we have a very close relationship uh, with uh, the embassy with the. Uh, regional attaché from FIT and AWEX, and um, the fact that uh, the office of Anne is inside the embassy is also, uh, I think, very, um, very important for us um, as a small chamber, uh, because it gives us uh, more, more strength when we receive people uh, and, uh, and we show where, where we are. And uh, this is also uh, a good way to, to keep a very close relationship with the embassy uh, the ambassador and uh, the the attaché. Mm. So uh, maybe Anne, you can uh, say a few words about about our activities. So uh, and our and our and our members. Thank you, thank you, Alain. Uh, 
thank you everyone for being connected and um, well, thank you for being interested and in, to know more about our chambers located a bit everywhere in Latin America. If we move to the next slide, basically to complement what Alain was saying, um, we, we, we really as, as a chamber, we are really personalized uh, chamber. Uh, close to, to our members, and I think that's very key, being myself Belgian, having lived in Luxembourg, but also, of course, in Belgium, like when you have uh, entrepreneurs coming to, 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 Bel to Chile, sorry, they need to have a contact person that they can trust and that they can rely on to have a good advice on who they have to meet, with whom they have to maybe do, do business. And I think for all the chambers here present, it's really key to be uh, that key person to, to help them to foster their, 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 their business in the end and to, to make it grow because that in the end is our mission uh, amongst other things, of course. Um, and I think that's really what differentiates us um, between other chambers is to be really, uh, to have a very close relationship with our, with our members. Uh, if we move to the next slide, just to have uh, an overview of, uh, of the little um, faces of our team. So you, you have a really, a, a very visual phase as as Alain was as mentioning this is our our executive team uh, working on a on a daily basis to 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 help our members and to make uh, magic happen i would say and if you go to the next slide you have the uh, corps the directorship corps the board of directors who are all um, uh, general managers presidents and and partners of big firms of big companies who are really assisting and giving their uh, their knowledge their experience being themselves belgian luxembourgish or dealing on a daily basis with with belgian companies so that's definitely a very uh, big asset and big added value to our uh, function on a daily basis um, and on the next slide, you, you see also the uh, faces of our, um, of our um, ambassadors um, of Belgium and Luxembourg, of course, and of our representatives of FIT and AWEX, as Alain was mentioning, uh, who are also very key in our day-to-day -day work. I would say, um, before moving to the activities, that we have seen since the pandemic, of course, we had to reinvent ourselves, all of us, uh, being a chamber. And we have seen really a strong interest from our side, at least from Chile, in the import and export matters with Belgium and Luxembourg. And, and in that sense, our partners of uh, AWEX and FIT have been a tremendous asset, helping us to, to help basically our members who wanted to buy containers from Belgium that had to come to Chile and that we're seeing difficulties at, at the Duan to, to get into the country or to facilitate contacts uh, simply to, to get the perfect contact in Belgium to buy the, 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 the products that they needed. So I think as, as our, um, as our uh, Cancion Nacional or Hymne Nacional says, l'union fait la force, indirect max macht, uh, I think that this is a very good example to show how working closely with the embassy, with AWICS, with FIT, uh, with our council makes, uh, makes magic happen. So, so that's to, just to have an overview of, of the, the, the people behind the faces that you see here. And if we go to the, to the next slide before going to the activities, um, you have here a very visual overview, uh, what Alain was mentioning of our key, um, key fields, gastronomy, tourism, energy, as you may see, uh, so, and also with a few uh, of our main uh, uh, members, we also count uh, approximately 45 uh, members. So I see that we're all pretty much having the same type of, of structure, uh, which is really nice because basically we can really share a lot of things between the three uh, chambers. Um, and if we go to the next slide, and that will be the, the, the last part of the presentation, here you have some visual aspects of uh, basically what we're doing uh, monthly. Uh, it's very dynamic and very differentiated, but basically you see that we, we, we choose specific uh, themes of interest or a new law came out that would be interested for our members. We make lunches, we organize lunches so do, that we can have a conversation about it. Um, we, of course, have a very tight and close relationship with authorities here in Chile and also in Belgium and Luxembourg, of course, which, of course, helps um, our members if they need to have a permit, uh, that a permit needs to be granted or they need to have an access to the Minister of Energy for a big project that they want to implement, for example. And I think that 
relationship, close relationship with the ministries and, and authorities is very key to faci facilitate the work um, and, and the development of our members in, in Chile. Um, we also organize business summits, business fairs to give more exposition uh, of Belgium and Luxembourg here in, uh, in Chile. And we all also organize every year economic trade missions of big companies coming from Belgium and Luxembourg to Chile, uh, who clearly have an interest to invest in Chile. And we really guide them uh, to meet with the relevant people and meet with the Chilean, local Chilean uh, uh, companies in order to do business. So I think that's also very good to foster the relationship between our three companies. And if we go to the next slide, um, you also see that there we have, uh, as I was mentioning, we have a close relationship with our members. So what we do is va various B2B meetings um, uh, in order to sit with our uh, member, listen to what, he, what he's experiencing, what he needs, and with that information, we can really match it with the services that we could offer to them because each member is different. Each member needs different services and assistance. So with those meetings, we're really trying to assist in a, on, a, on a, the most tailor-made way possible. Um, of course, as Alain was mentioning, we are bon vivants in Belgium. We love to get to get get together, to meet each other, to have a good beer, una buena cerveza, as as we say it here in in, in Chile. In, uh, in Chile. Um, so we have a lot of dinners, after offices, cocktails, um, in a more relaxed way when they're after offices or more formal way sometimes for, for dinners uh, or farewell parties. Um, we even in pandemic, as you can see, we did a culinary event um, with a wine, um, sorry, a, a beer um, tasting of three, three beers online. Everyone was very happy at the end of the, of the beer tasting. Um, we are doing also a lot of women coaching, as Alain was mentioning, and Damien also previously. Uh, we see that there is a very big interest and need to an, an awareness to create in, in the companies to give more exposition to women. Um, so we're really uh, trying to, to develop and, and give, give, the, give the visibility on, on, for women on that aspect. We do company visits and uh, trainings in, in general. So I think with that overview, you, get, you can have a glimpse of what we're doing. Um, but again, as I say, uh, we, we really listen to each member specifically and try to, to give them what they need on a specific basis. Uh, so I think that's really, really key. Um, and I believe with this, with this union, with this uh, partnership that we're creating now among uh, Latin America with uh, these uh, three chambers, uh, we're really giving another added value, which is an internationalization of our services, looking further than Chile and looking to our neighbors in Argentina, in Brazil, um, and giving this, this vision and, and perspective of growing uh, more globally, which I think is also a very good uh, way of assisting our members. So I'm very happy to, to be in contact with anyone who has questions. Uh, my email address is there. The email address of, of Alain, my president, is also there. Uh, we are on all the possible uh, uh, platforms to, to be seen and, and, and to be reached. So, um, so very happy to be in contact with any of, of you who, who may need it. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Alain. Uh, I think we now give the word to the ones who are putting us together here, the Belgian Chambers, uh, represented by Brigitte Verkinderen. Uh, Brigitte, please let us know a bit more about all the chambers and how we're structuring these partnerships. The screen is yours. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you, everyone, for the interest and the enthusiasm. Uh, you are uh, expressing in throughout your uh, presentations. Um, I myself know from my personal experience in Spain, where I was a director of a, a Belgian Luxembourg Chamber, how uh, fantastic, but also from time to time, how difficult life in a chamber may be. So the purpose. Uh, of my presentation today is um, to describe the benefits of all your members of the fact that your chamber is formally part of our network. Uh, and for this, I, I just want, and I will be very fast, but I just wanted to have this formally um, <clears throat> as, a, as a documentation for you, so you can watch uh, afterwards also. 
bit the structure of Belgian chambers, and then uh, it's you have the Federation of Belgian Chambers, and then you have a connection, a collaboration between Luxembourg, Belgium, and in some cases also with Holland. And this has his uh, historic um, history. It's history in uh, 1948 when Benelux, Belgium, Luxembourg, and uh, uh, the Netherlands constituted the first custom uh, union. And from there, this was the predecessor of the Benelux. And actually also, it was an inspiring uh, initiative for the creation of the European Union. Um, so we can go to uh, now exactly this slide. You have 13 local chambers in Belgium uh, and 37 chambers abroad. And if we go to the next one, uh, slide, next slide. Yes, so the 13 local chambers are located in Flanders, Brussels and Wallonia. And then we go to the next slide, because I do not know, we are a very small country, but we like to complicate things when they could be simple. <laughs> so our country is divided in three parts. The northern part, so this Flanders, which is Flanders, then you have capital Brussels, then you have Wallonia. Um, and this structure of a federation has, of course, his uh, consequences for the chambers. And we go to the next slide already. Um, so you see six chambers in Flanders, one in Brussels, one in eastern Belgium, well, because actually we are four parts, but the eastern part, uh, which is close to the front uh, uh, with Germany is also a part, a community, so uh, German speaking part, and then five chambers in Wallonia. We go to the next slide. And uh, there I would like to uh, uh, stop one, one minute. So um, all these chambers in Belgium, um, and this is not the case in other countries, but the chambers in Belgium are as private as they can be. They are not public chambers. Uh, the membership is voluntary. So uh, the chambers in Belgium do really have the mindset of an entrepreneur. If they do work badly, they will lose all their members. Uh, but as they work, very good, and I am testimony te um, uh, witness since 15 years of their work. Um, I see a constant evolution, and um, at the right, uh, the yellow uh, quarter, um, you see 26,000 members, and I really want to emphasize this because. 97% uh, of these uh, members of these companies are um, pymes in Espanol, uh, <clears throat> small and medium enterprises, which is enormous. But then you have to see they are, uh, they take for their part 85% of the exports in uh, Belgium. So the consequence of this imagine is that, and you guess it, the chambers are very mighty. They are independent. They are beca independent because they are private organizations, but they are mighty because they have the power of representation of 85% of the exports of this country. I say this country because I'm, I'm talking from Brussels. Um, it's important to know this because the advocacy of the chambers is a very, very important part of the work they do. And once again, I, 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 I witness this constantly that um, <clears throat> governments have no, uh, can't rule the chambers, but the chambers can influence. And actually it, it makes me uh, remind the words of, uh, the person who is now the Minister of Finance in Luxembourg, 
Uh, but at that time, I, I'm talking about 2009, when I was in Barcelona, he was a president of the Chamber of Luxembourg, of the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg. And he said, a very beautiful phrase, I never forgot it. Oh, he said, Luxembourg, it's such a small country, but we are sovereign. And the most uh, biggest added value of small country is the way from a small individual to the decision maker, that way is very short. The smaller the country, the shorter the way is. And it's true, it's still true. And I often um, am reminded of his words. So, but now we go to the following slide. Uh, yes, I give you some, I, I, I left this, um, slide because it's interesting to see how those local chambers get their funding as they are private. Well, there's only 15% which is um, subsidies. All the rest is commercial or membership fees income. And the subsidies, I must uh, add, uh, actually the, the biggest part is um, for the uh, programs of education they install and they renew and they rethink uh, every year for to form the formation of their uh, members, the companies. So um, I must say it's quite, quite amazing how a small country has such a dynamic um, force and uh, the, uh, the opposite of uh, a functionary uh, mentality. Huh? Although we all need each other, as I heard already also today. So we go to the, the next slide. Um, and we come to your world, the world of the chambers abroad. Uh, we are now 37 bilateral. Bilateral means uh, Belgium, Luxembourg, and the country where they are uh, located now. Um, and lately, uh, my attention, this year, actually, my attention has been uh, um, forwarded to the continent of America, the Northern America, the Central America, and the South America. And look where I am here in the good company of three uh, Latin American chambers. Um, and we are very, very happy. You may be happy to be part of us, but we are very happy to have you with us. And just to entertain, we I, I, I entered a small uh, video. So let's watch. Is your business already involved in international trade or is that your ambition? Then here is what VLCCA has to offer you. VLCCA stands for Belgian Luxembourg Chambers of Commerce Abroad. This network of Belgian Luxembourg Chambers of Commerce covers more than 130 countries. These chambers are run by business people. They know what it means to hire staff, find clients, and deal with public administrations in other countries. Their goal? To help others like you expand your business abroad. VLCCA works closely together with local chambers of commerce and with federal and regional authorities in Belgium and Luxembourg. That way, you get access to the best possible expertise, knowledge and contacts. Are you looking for a business partner abroad? VLCCA finds you the perfect match. No matter if you need a supplier, distributor, transporter or someone who knows all about international contracts, if you're planning a business trip abroad, we make sure you don't have to worry about visas, translation or meeting locations. Ready to enter a new market? Relax. We can help you with domiciliation or registering a local company. Or why not call upon us to recruit employees or find the right HR and accounting partner? Along the way, we will keep you updated about local do's and don'ts and the latest regulations. By sharing experiences lived by other entrepreneurs, we smooth your takeoff time and give your business abroad a kickstart. Finally, we know that some extra visibility goes a long way when entering a new market. Our awards and theme weeks help Belgian and Luxembourg entrepreneurs stay on top of mind abroad. So, are you looking for a partner you can rely on? Contact us to find out what BLCCA can do for you.
Yes. Um, so. Is your business already involved in international trade? Yeah. But yes, the next slide uh, is quite uh, small, but you have to fill in. Uh, it consists in network, trust, and then accreditation association, which is the result of the network, the trust. And um, I just want to uh, first handle the network. Um, this is the key business, the core business of the Federation of Belgian Chalmers and BLCCA, offer a vast network all over the world and a network in Belgium itself. And this means that um, local chambers are involved. The BLCCA or chambers in Latin America, all of you I've heard, are referring to embassies, to the regions, the collaboration, cooperation, um, which is um, very important. You could say it's a kind of, if I, if I say it in a non-sympathetic way, uh, <clears throat> it means a certain control. But as I'm a sympathetic person, I prefer the, uh, the, 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 qualify, the qualification of cooperation. And this is the key of success, of course. As I heard already one of you say this, the cooperation between all the actors in the business um, all over the world, not only in Belgium. Um, what does mean an association and an accreditation to the Belgian channels? What does it mean for the companies who are member of that chamber? And what does it mean for the other chambers or other companies who see, who have contact with a company who is member of a chamber. It means that there has been established a relationship of trust, of sérieux, what they call in French, the sérieux, um, and a network of chambers of commerce can offer you this guarantee because uh, finally it's a guarantee of uh, serious companies. I know, and we are aware, there are lots of uh, um, private and other databases and uh, um, uh, platforms, but they never have the guarantee of a trustee. They can't give you the guarantee of a trustee party giving you simply the, uh, um, the coordinations of a company. Only a chamber can that, because Anne Brueggemann said it also from Chile, the personal relationship with the companies is fundamental, is the fundament, is a fundament of the channels of commerce. So we, as a federation uh, who um, gathers all these chambers internationally in all continents, actually, in uh, Asia, uh, Africa, Europe, uh, Americas, um, we have the mission, the obligation, the passion, I must say also, to offer that guarantee and to fight for that guarantee. Yeah. So um, in order to uh, continue with that uh, label of quality, the Federation offers uh, uh, services. And in the next slide, we will see the tools we use for this. Um, it is not static because, of course, we learn from each other, we inspire each other, we are inspired by the others. So it's a work in progress and it's as the world is changing, we have to change and we have to adapt. Um, but in this moment, at this moment, we have some nice tools, for example, um, a meet a BLCCA, it's an online session that we organize for uh, the local chambers in which we put in the spotlight a BLCCA, a chamber abroad. And um, this chamber can really uh, present its chamber, 
the country where it's located in, the specificities of the country, the network of its memberships of the companies in a very, very uh, good, efficient way. It's, of course, also, um, how do you say that? Uh, a question of uh, confidence. And so the, at the end of that kind of presentations, you always have Q&A and you always have very, very often, uh, anyway, um, clear answers to the questions that exist from local channels. So this is the fantastic tool to present yourself to all the local chambers. Then, um, of course, information, best practices, that's an, another tool that, for example, in young uh, added, um, young uh, members of the BLCCA, we offer membership, we offer mentorship. Mentorship from a chamber who has already a large, a vast experience. Yeah, in it's organized by that mentor and the chamber who wants to um, talk about problems. How can we resolve this for our members? How uh, should we proceed for this problem? You see, so this is a B two B relationship between the BLCCA and another BLCCA. It's useless to ask to someone who is working in an office. Uh, to ask how do I resolve uh, a problem for a, uh, for a company. You have to ask it to someone and you have to receive the answer to someone who has the experience in it. Yeah. Then, so it's, that means also collaboration between chambers. So I'm just uh, uh, going to the, the next one. Uh, and I see that you, uh, your chambers, your three chambers already are in that uh, in that way, but by, by the dynamic of uh, of all of you um, saying that we have to collaborate and and have other meetings online and and help our uh, companies who want to um, discover Chile out from Brazil or from um, or, or in Argentina or vice versa. Yeah. So for me, as a coordinator, it's a fantastic, fantastic situation. And, and I'm very happy and honored to, to witness this uh, energy you have uh, and the brains you have. And then um, in the middle is uh, BLCCA Academy. This is a yearly um, happening. It's really a happening. And this year in 2022, it was already a fantastic happening. I have been um, like, uh, I don't know, you have to come uh, uh, almost, uh, um, um, yeah, almost, uh, I don't know. I, the, 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 un, 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 now, anyway, the BLCCA Academy is a really happening where the chambers themselves, so the directors, the presidents, board members can come to Belgium and they have uh, workshops where they learn from each other. They have B2B uh, meetings with chambers, with all the local chambers and the responsibles of uh, internationalization. And they discover each year another region in Belgium. So last year, so in September, this year was uh, in Limburg. And uh, just this morning, I had a call with uh, Liège, and next year it will be in Liège in September. And and uh, um, I, I need still to have the uh, confirmation, but it will be on four and five September. This is um, important for the network of the directors and the boards of the chambers with the local chambers which of course helps enormously your own members. Um, you have direct away, you have, you know the person who is in charge of this, of this problem. And there is uh, establishing the, um, the link, the personal link, the personal link once again, Anne Bruggemann, you were right to emphasize this, the personal link with the chambers. Um, so for me, it's 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 um, 
very it's a key uh, event for the rest of uh, the life of that year of a chamber. And uh, finally, we have also this is new, quite new. So this is an experimental uh, thing, but it's it's going on. We have the Expo Day in uh, now on, on December the eighth where companies can meet chambers, companies can meet uh, companies. Um, and I've seen already that uh, chambers, your chambers are already involved and have, uh, have um, uh, interviews asked by companies. Yeah, so these are, for the moment, our tools. Um, I propose to go to the next slide where you will see, read some testimonials of the different chambers. I, I put some from different regions and different uh, uh, continents because it's interesting to, to see uh, how they, what they feel in, in Africa, in Morocco, for example, what they uh, appreciate in Portugal and so on. So I, re I leave this for your lecture uh, later on. Uh, Japan, for example, uh, it's an amazing, I must say, it's an amazing uh, network of amazing people. And it's very strange, I, I permit myself this personal note, uh, every person in every country, I have the impression they really suit in the country, their personality, which is fantastic and which is also very good for all the uh, companies, because in each country, a Belgian company or another company or uh, uh, have are a bit at home. It's a pied -à terre in another country, like you are the pied -à terre in Brazil, Chile, and uh, Argentina for companies who want to invest in your country where you are located. And uh, well. Uh, as you can imagine, I'm a happy person in my life and in my work. Um, so I thank you so much for your uh, attention. We are here. Um, if you have questions, we are here. And uh, I would say, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's go on and learn from each other and inspire each other. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brigitte. It was a very inspiring presentation of all the members, all the 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 Belga, Belgian Luxembourgish chambers, and of course of the the federation. Uh, I'd like to I, I'd like to invite everyone to open their cameras, and we now enter a Q and A session. So everyone who has a question can open the cameras, open their mic. I'll just ask you to uh, take turns. Uh, I can uh, arrange this line, but uh, does anyone has questions? Can be specific for one chamber, can be uh, for everyone. I have a question, Daniel, for Brigitte, uh, regarding the BLCCA Academy and the other events. Do you think it will be possible for the chambers to have like the yearly calendar of events? Because uh, I think it is, it would be very important that we can program uh, participations of our members with uh, sufficiently in advance. Yeah. Uh, because sometimes uh, it involves like international travels. Uh, so if we really would like to participate in an active way, I think it would be interesting if the BLCCA could provide the chambers in time with a calendar so that we can program ourselves. Uh, you, as you know, international flights became very expensive. If you can book them in advance, it would be very helpful. So I think this would be a great way uh, to, to help our members and to help uh, the directory uh, to be involved actively uh, with the BLCCA. And another question that I would like to ask you as well, uh, regarding the BLCCA Academy, uh, um, last year you returned uh, to a, pre a presential event. Do you think in the future it would be able uh, to make like a mixture? Yeah. So uh, because 
this year, for instance, we were not able uh, uh, to be able uh, uh, to participate uh, because it didn't fit in. We weren't yet member of the BLCCA as well. Uh, last year, I remember uh, I have been invited in order to get to know a little bit to see if the Belga Lux would be continuing with the procedure for uh, entering the BLCCA and it was done in a digital way. But uh, I think maybe uh, 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 considering like uh, um, a dual events, uh, some events maybe during the academy for members that are abroad and are not able to come uh, might be a help as well. I think for myself, uh, I experienced uh, only the digital one and I thought it was very, very interesting. And there is no limit, there is no cost. And I think it also helps a lot to get to know the members of the other chambers and it helps the networking even digitally. So yeah. thank you. Well, thank you, Anne. Uh, uh, fortunately, I have been thinking about the first point, the annual agenda already, for example, this morning. So with uh, in Liège, uh, I with the director there, I said, look, I need the datum before the end of this year. Uh, I need the datum already this week. I mean, it's not that difficult. We can fill in the program, we can fill in everything else, but I want to have the datum because it's not possible that people, um, the, 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 the far away chambers have to change uh, their uh, travels or, or invent traveling uh, at, at a small, even four months, it's too late four months before. It must be one year before. So normally this week, I should have had that final datum. Secondly, today also, I said we should uh, remain in one in situ, in one place, in that sense that the day of uh, the first day where we have uh, the meetings, where we have the workshops, we must be physically in one um, one address yeah where exactly as you say we can install the uh, digital meeting uh, with the channels who are not present physically so uh, i'm i you have you have your lawyer here in brussels for your requests yeah and in in general the, to put on the agenda for the whole year it's not that difficult we just have to do this. Yeah? But as we are growing, uh, I saw slides from some years ago where the chambers, the BLCCA were 23. Now we are 37. So um, it's a bit my fault also because I'm uh, fighting for other chambers also to have them with us. But this means has this consequence. Yeah. So the answer is yes on both of your questions. Thank you. We have a question by Eduardo. Eduardo, would you like to read it or can I read it? What do you prefer? Hello, everyone. Yeah, Hello. here is Eduardo from Tactivel NG, Chile. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was just a, a small question. I, I see that there are uh, company members, but uh, our question is that uh, if it's allowed to have individual members as part of the Belgolux or, or is it just open for, for company company membership? Hi, Eduardo. Nice to meet you. I don't know if you're located in, in Chile. I suppose you are. The question is for me. Um, yes, the question is yes, we are also having uh, personal individual members. Um, so it goes from an individual to a um, mid-sized company to a huge company. So you have all type of individuals and companies in our chamber. So more now, welcome to, to, to have you join our, our chamber. Yes, great. I'm located in Santiago, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Eduardo. Here we go. Thank you. Uh, anyone else has any questions? Let's see. 
Hey there, I'm Nicholas. I have a question. Hello, Nicholas. Hello, everyone. I'm Nicholas Berenfeld here from Twideo. Uh, we do industrial 3D printing. We're currently having business here in Argentina where we started and we are now also present in, in Brazil. Uh, I had like two questions. Firstly, uh, if, a mem if a member has interest in like two countries, uh, does he have like to participate in both chamber with the same company or, or does it work? Is this something uh, thought about that situation? And also, I wanted to like uh, in Brazil. I wanted to know in Brazil if uh, you guys had uh, like a few entrepreneurs, a few startups. Uh, you mentioned a lot of targeting the bigger company, but I wanted to know if there is like a few technological startup from Belgian people in Brazil. And also, maybe like last thought of uh, what about trying to create uh, like a group from the whole continent of Belgium entrepreneur maybe not only those three those three countries i'm like anyone has ever thought or tried something like that eve maybe can I you think... take over oh, oh i'm sorry go ahead i'm gonna go for the part of the the, the global uh, relationship i'm gonna leave the questions for brazil of course for for my colleagues but um exactly this mission of this this meeting that we have today is exactly that purpose to to organize a family, a Latin family of Belgium and Luxembourg uh, individuals and companies throughout the region. So basically, if you have your company now in Argentina and Brazil, the idea with this is that you have an easy access and collaboration with also Chile, basically. The, the package is the three, and we're going to expand it also to other countries. But this is clearly the idea, and that you also can, if you go to, to Argentina tomorrow, and if you're located in Brazil, let's say, that you can benefit also from the, from the activities from the chamber in Argentina. We're having and we're building now this collaboration between the three chambers, also with the BLCCA, uh, of course. So on that response, and or that question, my response is clearly you have a, you have a solid team um multinational team behind uh, behind you to support you for okay, brazil thanks. uh nicola and Anne and everyone uh i think it's a good question uh i think this is the idea the idea is to 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 create bridges and connections and uh we do not have uh, the to the the figures of um I would say uh, invited uh, members, but we could say maybe uh, that uh, today, maybe in our bylaw, we could have the invited uh, in the invited members from the BLCCA members, uh, and of course uh, you could be member, uh, maybe not a voting member, but uh, I would say an active member. Yes, I think uh, you do not have to to pay it again. Of course, it's uh, it's not very often, of course, that we would have. Uh, I believe uh, we hope, of course, we will have a lot of uh, invited member. Uh, but uh, normally, it's it's a uh, it's time to time that there is a, a member that uh, on the past that came uh, from other countries. So Nicola and everyone, I think uh, le, le bal est ouvert. Uh, so I think we are we are ready, of course, to make connections and to uh, to to make maybe I don't know what kind of activity we could do. So let's open the door and make bridges. I, I just like to add, uh, as a director of sustainability and innovation of Belgalux Brazil, uh, we don't have a lot of uh, members aimed at technology for small companies currently. But as we sp spoke today, um, Belgalux and I believe all of the chambers are very open to the suggestions and demands of our members. So once you're in the, the Belga looks, you can obviously help us to build this, um, these dynamics between companies. And of course, we have the biggest companies from Belgium installed in Brazil. So we can help you also to reach the big, big ones as a small company, as a startup. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. I think uh, one point also, uh, something uh, that maybe was not on a presentation on Damien, uh, something that we are starting also, maybe on Chile showed this, uh, is to create some uh, internal uh, uh, commissions of work. 
Uh, this is something that uh, we are starting. And the first commission that we decided to create is, I would say, uh, it's a kind of uh, environment, uh, green tech and uh, carbon credits. Uh, let's say a big package like this. Uh, so uh, um, this is something that we are starting for 2023. Just to make clear, I, I forgot to make the presentations. Eve, who is talking right now, is the vice president of Belga Lux Brazil. Uh, Damon had an appointment and he couldn't make it to past uh, 12. So thank you, Eve, for representing Belga Lux Brazil. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, from Argentina, do we, have, uh, do we have any questions from Argentina? We love Argentina. <laughs> I'm, I, I have a question for it, Hita. Actually, you mentioned contemporary art and curating um, uh, in this business as well. So can we start talking about uh, uh, a deal with between Argentina and Brazil on this side on culture, see more Belgian culture here in South America as well? Yes, of course. No, we we decided that we talk about this, and obviously, I'm very keen on developing. Um, well, there are some expos already going on between Argentina and and Belgium. There was one on transatlantic modernisms, and and we're repeating, and we're doing here in Argentina now. That was in Belgium, and now we're repeating similar activities here with the same artists. Uh, so more modernism, but there's a whole field of contemporary art left open. So very keen to develop that with you. <laughs> Excellent. It's good to see art and culture as a business as well. I guess uh, Ed Song from Impextraco is with his hand. Uh, go ahead, Edson. Can you... Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, about sustainability on Belgalix, at Belgalix Brazil, uh, is, is there any program or any instructions uh, to companies that are in Brazil uh, how to improve or to implement some actions of sustainability? Uh, or there is there uh, any workshop or what are the actions about sustainability in Brazil uh provide by belga lux good question thank you Edson. so uh in fact uh, um as we see we, we are on a team uh, since uh, may and we have been uh, doing a lot of things and uh, in fact the um, the environment and so the the, the green tech that we have just talked now uh, it's in fact uh, last month we got a new member it's a it's a lawyer member it's a law company law firm and they are specialist in forest at the beginning we didn't understand exactly what specialty of forest maybe they are timber maybe something uh, but in fact uh, they have uh, so daniel was on the on the meeting uh, also with uh, claude which is our member from the north of the country uh, which presented uh, and in fact, they, they talk regarding um, um, carbon credit. And then we discuss, we discuss, and immediately we said we have to do something because we have demand. And uh, of course, Brazil is uh, under pressure uh, regarding environment, a lot of pressure. And I think it's a human demand uh, to do something better for our planet. Uh, of course, it's not... Uh, uh, light words uh, and so uh, on this meeting we decided and, and we talked with Damien in order to to make this commission and this commission will be written this week <laughs> Edson so it's very very new uh, so the idea is to on this umbrella to have different kind of uh, players uh, um, uh, to discuss what to do of course uh, of course lawyer they have a lot of ideas and they are very creative and they know a lot of things uh, and um, last week, so 10 days ago, uh, for example, uh, we were invited by Solvay. We visited for one day all the factory close to Sao Paulo. And then it was uh, all the people from, uh, 
from the environment, uh, ESG, uh, from the survey. So it was very interesting, very interesting. So they, are, they have a, a huge site of something like 20 hectares in close to Sao Paulo. And so they presented all the activity on ESG. Eh? Of course, ESG is vast, eh? is vast. And then uh, at this time, so the lawyer was there and some idea, they present some ideas that in fact Solvay didn't know. So that's the idea. Of course, uh, we are, uh, that's the idea of, um, of uh, presenting ideas uh, regarding uh, idea, uh, regarding some, um, how to do regarding green tax and, uh, and and those um, uh, carbon credit and so far. So Edson, it's a pleasure because I don't know you. I know Impex Traco, and I later on I will take your phone number and uh, maybe maybe we can talk talk uh, and maybe to bring you also on this on this commission. Hello, yeah, just that, uh, as a director of uh, sustainability, we've been building this kind of systems this kind of uh, projects in the last two years since the pandemics of course everybody went so every the whole world went through what we went we've been through and um, we're now having some solid programs so we have we had good practice a webinar on good practices on sustainability now we had this visit to uh, Roja Solve, which is a huge factory in Brazil that has uh, very serious programs, not only uh, um, not only with rules that the governments are already implementing, but something that they were they have been building for ten plus years, twelve years. So, uh, and as Eve says, uh, we are in this this uh, period of the chamber that is to um, build build programs and people can frequently talk about what is being doing by the government, what is it being doing by the European side, by uh, Belgium, by Luxembourgers, and of course in, in Brazil. And now we're, um, we're developing this constant meetings. So it's a very exciting time to have this conversation. And we of, of course are talking in the future about it. It's the world of the moment. Yeah. So, no, also I would like to add, so, sorry. Um, I would like to add that from uh, up the part of the Argentine fund, uh, Belgian Luxembourg Chamber in Argentina that we're also very interested. And likewise, as is happening in Brazil, we also have like a lot of forestry activities and, uh, but also in farming, so in the farming sector, there's a lot going on around carbon credits. So I think these countries are really uh, starting up these um, the carbon credits uh, legislation because there's no legislation. I don't know how it is in Ar in uh, Brazil, but in Argentina there's none. But everyone is busy is working on this subject on um, on carbon credit sustainability and how to 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 organize this this market of carbon credits also no. So and we as the Chamber of Commerce are very interested in 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 organizing events around this issue and uh, and helping the companies to further study these uh, possibilities, which uh, in these countries these latitudes is like uh, very accurate I think and very present for the time being. Um, well, no, I just wanted to add that. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Uh... We're already uh, 12.25, so I guess we're uh, near the end. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone who's been present. I'm not sure if everyone, anyone has any other question. I guess Anne is, is Anne van der... No, no, I, no just okay. wanted, I just wanted to ask if everybody that uh, hasn't a problem with it could open his camera so that we can have like a final picture of our digital okay. meeting before <laughs> leaving the meeting. <laughs> yeah, if you could all then open your cameras and let us see your faces so we can have a final uh, documentation and publish about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I will take like a print screen so that, and then I will work with that picture if that is okay for you, okay? Cheese. Let's go. <laughs> yeah.
Okay, thank you. Thanks everyone for this incredible meeting. We believe that from now on, Latin America will have a, another great network and for business and thanks uh, of course to all the chambers and the federation to uh, take their times to talk to everyone here thank you thank, thank you all thank you thank you bye 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 bye, bye. bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.